Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. And before you freak out, yes, I'm not in my basement anymore. That's because when I've been recording in my basement, it seems like echoey and the audio is off and it also kind of just looks really gross. So for now, I'm going to be recording in this room, which is my parents' closet. If the audio sounds crappy, I'm sorry. Let me know in the comments down below if this room is better to record in or the basement. Anyways, on with the video. Today, I'm going to be talking about a character that's very near and dear to my heart. This guy, Spyro the Dragon. Now when you look at this guy, you may think one of two things, either, oh hey, that's Sparrow the Dragon, or, oh hey, that's Sparrow the Dragon from the Skylander series. That is exactly what I want to talk about today. Now, I am a die-hard Skylanders fan. I'm not much of a fan of the newer games like Superchargers and Imaginators and Trap Team. I would say I'm more of a fan of the original two games, Skylanders and Skylanders Giants. And something interesting about the original Skylanders game is its title. It's called Skylanders Spyro's Adventure. Now, I've always been really curious why it was called Spyro's Adventure, because for some reason in the game, Spyro didn't really have much of a storyline, really. It was more of a collaborative experience. Every character had their own story. I don't know why it was really centered around Spyro. Now that's where things get interesting. I'm sure a lot of people already knew this, but I was surprised to learn that Spyro is not from Skylanders. Spyro is from his own games. Yes, there was a ton of Spyro games that came before Skylanders. He was apparently a really big gaming mascot back in the day. Eventually, when Spyro fell by the wayside, Activision got the rights to Spyro, and they were going to make a Spyro reboot game. And fans of Spyro were obviously ecstatic, and went through a ton of iterations. There was a version where Spyro was going to be super tiny, there was a version where it was going to be a lot more mature, there was going to be a lot of blood and gore, and it was, um, for more of a mature audience of the Spyro series. But eventually, they came up with a completely new concept entirely, when they teamed up with Toys for Bob. Now, they had the idea of combining toys with video games, where you would have little toy figurines like this, and they would be able to shoot into a video game. That's where the game Spyro's Kingdom comes into play. Now, this was sort of a really early version of Skylanders. It was a lot more smaller in scale. Something really interesting I find about this version of Skylanders is that there's a lot of beta designs of characters that you see nowadays in the... Well, not nowadays, because Skylanders is dead, but characters you'd see in the original Skylanders game. I don't remember their names, but I'm going to show them on screen. This guy became this guy. This guy became this guy. This guy became this guy, believe it or not. Uh. This guy became this guy, and this guy became this guy. Now, when Activision pitched this idea to Toys for Bob, they looked at it and went, hmm, we can make this better. So with a lot of tweaking and a lot of redesigns of the game, we got Skylanders, Spyro's Adventure. But this is where things get kind of interesting. The game became so big in scale, and there were so many new characters, that Spyro kind of fell by the wayside. Sure, this was called Spyro's Adventure, because, well, it was supposed to be a Spyro reboot in the beginning. But something interesting about this game is... If you look at the cover art, Spyro isn't even the, the main focus. It's Stealth Elf. And also something very interesting to touch on about this series is that Spyro got a major redesign. This is what Spyro originally looked like, and this is what he looked like in Skylanders. Ugh, that's, that's a big yikes. Listen, I like this Spyro design as a Skylanders character, but as a Spyro redesign, it's, it's ugly. Sure, Spyro is on the cover, he's in the name of the game, and he's also the first Skylander you ever get when playing Skylanders. Along with Trigger Happy and Gilgrunt. But if I'm being completely honest, I don't play as Spyro when I'm playing Skylanders. Because he's not a cool character. All the characters that were made around Spyro are so much more cooler than Spyro. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is this is not a Spyro game. It is a game that has Spyro in the name. Don't get me wrong, Skylanders is an amazing game. I love the game. But as a Spyro reboot, it's just, it's really sad. And as the games went on, Spyro just kind of disappeared. Sure, he was still in all the games, but none of the games really had, you know, a focus on him. They were just Skylanders games at that point. So with the death of the Skylanders game franchise, we also see the death of Spyro the Dragon.
But wait, there's more! I forgot to mention that there was also a Skylanders Netflix series! During the development of the last ever Skylanders game, there was also a Skylanders Netflix series that came out. And guess what? Spyro is the main character! And I have to say, he's a good main character too! Out of everything in the Skylanders franchise, this is the most Spyro representation we've ever gotten. But there was one little problem. It just wasn't Spyro anymore. There's been so many games and just so many different things at that point that Spyro was just not the Spyro that we all knew and loved. It was just Skylander Spyro. Skylander Spyro and Spyro Spyro were different Spyros. Spyro, Spyro Spyro. But anyways, I just wanted to talk about this because it was just something that I had on my mind and it just really bugged me. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Also, if you can count how many times I said Spyro in this in this video, I'll pin your comment. Okay, bye. Ooh.